Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. This time we are going to see an introduction to FEM. So this is the outline of the presentation. We are going to see first an introduction to this program. We are going to take as an example a magnetostatic uh, problem based on an air core inductor. Then for this we will see how to do the model construction and finally the analysis of results. So what is FEM? FEM stands for Finite Element Method Magnetics and it is a free software for solving two-dimensional planar and asymmetric problems at low frequency. Understanding by low frequency those frequencies which are below the radio frequency range. So in this case, the effect of the displacement currents can be neglected. The types of problems to be solved with FEM are magnetostatic, time harmonic magnetic, electrostatic, heat flow and current flow. For more information, you can go to this link here where you can find information about this software and you can also download a free copy of this software. A magnetostatic problem is that in which the fields do not depend on time. So we have these equations here from the uh, Maxwell equations, which are the curl of the magnetic field intensity is equal to the current density. Then the divergence of the magnetic flux density is equal to zero. And finally, the magnetic flux density is proportional to the magnetic field intensity. Being the proportionality constant mu, the permeability of the material. For nonlinear materials, mu can be represented as a function of the magnetic flux density, as shown in this expression here. On the other hand, we know that the magnetic flux density can be expressed as the curl of the magnetic vector potential. So at the end, using this expression in this other here, we can obtain this final expression here, which is the one that is going to be solved by the program in the case of magnetostatic problems. So the problem that we are going to study today corresponds to an air core inductor as the one we are showing here in this photograph. Here is the schematic of this inductor. It is going to have a length of 100 millimeter and a diameter of 10 millimeter. The diameter of the wire is going to be one millimeter. The number of turns is 100. And we are going to inject a current into the coil, which is going to be equal to one ampere. So in this way, as we know, we are going to have a magnetic flux and density field inside the coil in this direction. And this kind of problem has been very well studied in physics. So, for example, from this reference here below, we can get the magnetic flux density inside the coil, which will be given by this expression here. And assuming that the magnetic flux density is constant in the whole volume inside the coil, then we can approximate the inductance that we are going to have in this way. So at the end, we have this expression here for the inductance. With the values that we have seen in our sample, we can apply these equations and obtain a magnetic flux density equal to 1.25 millitesla and the value of the inductance is equal to 9.82 microhenries. So our objective using finite element analysis is to investigate up to what extent it is valid this assumption that the magnetic flux density is constant inside the coil and also to obtain a more accurate value for the inductance of the coil. So these are the steps that we need to take in order to develop our model. First, we need to draw the model then to place the block labels 
add materials, add coil properties, associate these properties to block labels, create boundary conditions, generate the mesh, and finally run the finite element analysis and analyze the results. This is the sketch of our drawing. Our problem is an axisymmetric problem, so we only need to draw half of the winding. Here we have the different points that are part of the winding drawing. So with these four points, we are going to be able to draw the coil of our inductor. In the program, the first step is to define the problem that we are going to solve. We can do this with this option here, problem, so we can define our problem. And then these three buttons here are used to do the drawing of our problem. The first button is to place the different points of our drawing. Then we can connect the different points using lines or using arcs. In order to place the different points of our drawing, we use on the keyboard the key tab. And then using the corresponding button here, we will join the different points by straight lines. So let's see how to do this with the program. First, we are going to start a new problem here. We are going to select our problem. In this case, it's a magnetics problem. Say OK. So we are now here in the uh, drawing. Now we are going to define our problem. Going here, problem. Our problem type is an axisymmetric problem, and the units that we are going to use are millimeters. It is a magnetostatic problem, so frequency is 0 Hz, and we can leave the rest of the option at, as by default. So we can say here, OK. Now we can place the different points. Now here it is selected, the uh, tool corresponding to the point placement. So we can press Tab on the keyboard and draw the different points. The first one is 550 millimeters. The second one is 6 50 millimeters. Next one is 5 minus 50 millimeters. And the last one is 6 minus 50 millimeters. So let's try to see everything. So we can do a zoom here and see a little bit better the drawing. Now the second step is to join these points with lines. So we select this tool and select the points and we are going to see how by selecting the points they are going to be connected with a straight line. Select now this one and this one and here we have the drawing corresponding to our winding. The second step in the process is to place the block labels. Block labels are used to associate materials and other properties to the different regions of the problem. So we use this tool here to place the block labels and we need two block labels. One is for the winding because we have one material here, the copper, in the winding and the other one is the air that we have surrounding our coil. So let's see how to do this. We are going to do a zoom here to see this better. And then we are going to add the block labels, one here and the other one outside. The next step is to add the materials that we are going to use. For this, we go to properties and then materials library. And then we are going to need air as material and also a copper wire with one millimeter diameter. So let's do this in the program. We go to properties, materials library, and then we select air and drop air in the model materials. Then we go to copper metric magnet wire. 
here and we search for one millimeter wire so we drop one millimeter wire here in our model materials now we need to add the properties for the coil for this we go to properties circuits and then add property and we are going to create a new property which is going to be a coil in series because in this case it is a winding so the turns are all in series and then we are going to select here the current for our coil which in this case is one ampere so let's go to the program go to properties circuits and then add property we are going to name this property as oil in series and with one ampere say okay we have here a new property which is the coil say okay now we are going to associate properties to block labels so for this we go to a block label right click to select the block label and then we press space on the keyboard so with this we have window here in which we can add the properties corresponding to our block in the case of the air is just to select the air for the block type and in the case of the coil we have to add the material that we are going to use which is the wire and the circuit and the number of uh, turns that we are going to have for this we have to take into account that a positive number of turns means current entering into the drawing and a negative number of turns means current coming out of the drawing so let's see how to do this with the program first we go to the block label right click and then press space so here is the A, so we select here A, and we can keep the other as default. And now for the other block label corresponding to the copper, we select with right click, press space bar, and then we select here one millimeter and insert it coil, and we can add here also the number of turns, which is 100. So we can leave the rest of the options as default so press ok the next step is to create the boundary conditions for this we can use this button here then we will have this window in which in principle we can leave all the options by default because in this case we want to solve for the field of the coil in an unbounded space so let's see this in our program go to boundary builder and then we can leave the number of layers and radius and everything as default so we press ok and then we can see here our boundary conditions created surrounding our coil so now we are almost ready we have to generate the mesh and run the finite element analysis and see the results we can do this with these three buttons here the first one is to generate the mesh the second one is to run the finite element analysis and the last one to do the analysis of the results so let's do this with the program now first we are going to save here for example and then run the mesh creator so we have here our mesh with as we can see here 8903 nodes so we can take a look for example in this part so we can see the mesh and that we have just created it was created using the default parameters and now we can go and run the finite element analysis so as you can see it is very quick and now we can see the results here so we can see some of the results in this drawing here we have also this window for the output so we can press any point and then see the different values of the flux and the magnetic flux density the different 
components of the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity, the permeability, the, the energy density, and also the current density. So, for example, if we do a zoom in this area here, what we are seeing is the magnetic flux lines. So, so here inside, if we measure the magnetic flux density, we can see that the value is very similar to the one that we have calculated theoretically. We can also do a color density plot by clicking here. So we select our quantity, for example, the flux density here and show density plot. So we say OK here and then we can see the different values in this window here on the right. We can also remove the magnetic flux lines if we like, so we can see better the magnetic flux density inside the coil, which is almost constant, as we have uh, talked before. Another interesting result that we can obtain here is the information regarding the coil. If we click here, on the coil, we can obtain the results corresponding to the coil, the co current that we know is 1 ampere, the voltage drop, the flux linkage, the flux overcurrent, which is the inductance of the coil. So here we can see that the inductance calculated in the program is 10.5 microhenries, which is very similar to the value that we have calculated theoretically. Also, we can obtain the resistance and the power that we are going to dissipate in the coil. Another interesting capability of the program is the possibility of plotting the values of the field following a given contour. For this, we can use this button here to define our contour. Then by pressing tab on the keyboard, we can enter the points of the contour. And then with this other button here, we can obtain the corresponding plot. So let's do this with the program. First, we define the contour by pressing tab. We enter the first point, 0, 0, and then again the second point, which is 50, 0, for example. So we can see here our contour defined. Now we press this button here and select the field that we want to represent, in this case the magnetic flux density, for example, the number of points, say OK, and then we can see here our representation. So we can see how the magnetic flux density is very constant inside the coil, and then when we go beyond the coil, then the magnetic flux density is decreasing very, very quickly. Finally, a very interesting tool of the program is the possibility of calculate integrals inside volumes in order to obtain the energy of the magnetic field or different losses and so on. For this, we use this button here to define the region in which we want to calculate the integral. And then with this other button here, we can do the calculation. For example, we are going to use this tool to calculate the inductance of our coil in another way by obtaining the magnetic field energy that we have in the volume surrounding the coil, uh, which is defined here in this expression. And then from this um, value of the magnetic field energy, then we can obtain the corresponding value of the inductance using this well-known expression here. So let's do this with the program. We select the button corresponding to region, and then we select this region outside, and also we need to select the region corresponding to the winding for better accuracy. So we have all this region. Now we go to integral, and then select the magnetic field energy, say OK, and here we have our result 
and we can see that with this value of the energy, the corresponding value of the inductance is the same as we have seen before. So this is all today in this presentation. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that it is useful for you. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and see you in the next video. Goodbye now.